Let's go live now to Sydney, where we're joined by Australian-born Lebanese journalist uh, Mary Saliba there. Thank you so much for coming on, Mary. Uh, firstly, we've seen these absolutely uh, shocking images coming out of Beirut, and there's been a massive push uh, by the international community, as we've just seen, to get aid uh, to these people there who have been affected. Tell me, what is the very latest uh, on this search and rescue effort? Absolutely, Sarah. Um, I think this is the worst uh, explosion that Beirut has ever seen, Lebanon. I've been talking to a lot of people on the ground uh, over the last few days and just now on the phone that even though they lived during and throughout uh, Lebanon civil war, they think that this is the worst, um, you know, worst attack that they've ever experienced. They've lost their homes. Um, they Look, Sarah, I just want to say one thing, though. It's not that Lebanon had a perfect... Uh, civil society structure as we would in Australia, for example. There's already no public services, there's no transport, there's no, um, you know, trains, there's no train line. I believe the last uh, train track uh, was destroyed in the 90s. So since then, like, we haven't really had any development or any infrastructure in Lebanon anyway. So that's been one huge, um, uh, you know, upheaval and chaotic point for Lebanese people just to try to get about their day. Their day. Um, in terms of uh, public services, it's, it's uh, been cut off since the beginning of the war, I would say, uh, 1975. But even prior to that, Sarah, there were a lot of problems with, um, you know, different types of uh, corruption and bribery and sectarian-based uh, parties in Lebanon. Um, so where this is, it, in, essentially, this is not a new conflict. It's actually been going on, and I would say safely since, uh, you know, maybe even after World War II. So uh, I think the Lebanese people are very resilient. And of course, they've gone through this before, uh, through the, the, the civil war, which was uh, atrocious atro and, and so traumatic for Lebanese people. The 80s when they were bombed as well. And uh, of course, trying to survive every day mm. during the 90s. They've also had the 2006 Lebanon war uh, with, sorry, between uh, Hezbollah and, um, uh, between Hezbollah and uh, Israel, I would like to say. Um, and, of course, that caused um, some infrastructural damage, no jobs, economy. I mean, you know, so this, again, mm. is just, I think um, it's the really, it's the last straw for Lebanese people. And just prior to this, Sarah, we had uh, all those protests um, yes. in on, And um, there was, uh, you might recall, the big WhatsApp protest because they mm. wanted to, uh, the government wanted to charge. Of course, not giving any civil services, not giving the people anything, but wanted to t charge them tax. Uh, for their WhatsApp calls. So that started off a revolution and they had bushfires. Um, I guess that would be our equivalent for us as Australians. They're, they're bushfires with no help. And yes. um, here they are relying on, again, uh, foreign aid, waiting for people to rescue them, waiting for Qatar, waiting for France, waiting for Germany, waiting for, um, you know, Norwegian Refugee Council. Mm. So, again, this is just the same situation for Lebanese people, but I do feel it's worse. And... Lebanese people are now absolutely fed up. They don't they don't trust their government. They don't trust these rescue efforts. They know it might help in the short term, but they're already um, they're already leaving. They just want to flee. Okay, Mary. In terms uh, of this uh, effort uh, being, you know, pushed by other countries, we do know that uh, Israel, in fact, has offered to help the Lebanese people. Also, uh, putting a picture of its flag up in Tel Aviv. Tell me, how's that being seen, and will this uh, aid be accepted? Look, I absolutely hope so, Sarah. For myself, as an Australian born here. Um, with Lebanese descent, when my parents uh, came to Australia, I think it was 1969. So in that region, with that in that in that conflict, in that dynamic, um, the regional um, uh, you know uh, conflict there, it's always been this kind of you know um, conflict between Israel and Arab countries, or Israel and Lebanon. And then since the 80s, it's become. Israel and Hezbollah. Now, a lot of the propaganda, I would say, in terms of this alleged war, and I do say it is an alleged war because I've had certain personal experiences that tell me it is absolutely impossible uh, to accept that you, you know, you're having a war with your neighbour. We, Lebanon, needs to cooperate uh, with Israel, whether. Um, you know, whether Hezbollah um, wants to accept that, or mm. I believe they actually do accept that, and I do believe that Hezbollah leaders know that yes. they have to 
uh, cooperate with Israel. And they they probably are behind the scenes, but um, they all right, Mary. Can... Yep, Mary, we. We are nearly out of time. Uh, really, really appreciate your perspective on all of that. Thank you so much uh, for coming on to chat to us.